So it seems like a few people are interested in my Galileo 2 Orbiter 2 Hybrid. So I figured I'd do a bit of a video and just kind of show exactly how I assembled this. And, um, you know, I did a performance test. Definitely works better than both um, Galileo 2 or Orbiter 2 as far as like pushing force. So that's awesome. Um, disclaimer, I haven't run this in a printer long term. I've done extrusion tests, but, you know, have I got the alignment all correct here? I don't know. I don't know how this is going to last long term, but it seems to be pretty solid. So, yeah. So here are the things that I used for this conversion. So I've got the Galileo 2 parts here. I've got the Orbiter 2 parts here. So obviously you need this gear from the original Orbiter 2 and this housing, bearings. Um, from the Galileo 2 kit, we've got all this stuff. This stuff is, sorry, this part here is optional. It's just a knob. Um, just makes it look cool and it lets you manually move the filament through so I like that actually sometimes it's handy um, this here is one of the key parts um, from the G2SA it's a spacer so you can find that on Jared's github for the G2, G2SA I don't know what it's called but you'll work it out you just go through the files and you'll see it so I actually had two Galileo 2 kits so I had extra of these shims so I've currently got four shims here which gives me two millimeters of spacing. And I don't really know 100% if that's what's required um, because it's, you know, obviously hard to see, you know, once it's assembled, what's going on inside there. But this seems to be good. But I guess I would recommend just maybe buying a pack of these shims and then maybe doing some exper experimentation. And um, if you let me know in the comments, you know, what is the perfect number um, if it's not four? And I'll pin your comment. So there's probably a few ways to get this assembled, but the way I'm going right now is just, you know, stack it all like this. Um, got the little bearing there and the, the gear there. And then this will just slide on top and then tighten it all down. So now I'm just testing the original Factory Orbiter 2 extruder. So starting it. 14 millimeters per second extrusion feed rate. So I think, you know, obviously it'll be okay for a little while until it gets to that. Yeah, so now it's skipping. So that's, yeah, so that's 14. I'm gonna go down to 12. See how that fares. Yeah, it's 12 skips. 11, see how 11 goes. So, 11 seems to be okay. 12 skips. Yeah, so that's 12, that's skipping. Thirteen millimeters per second. Thirteen millimeters per second seems to be okay. Fourteen. Go back to fourteen. Yeah. So fourteen millimeters per second does skip. So in conclusion, the modified Galileo two gearbox. Orbiter gears and housing that got me about 13 millimeters per second extrusion feed rate, which equals about 31.3 cubic millimeters per second extrusion. And then the factory Orbiter 2 got me about 11 millimeters per second feed rate, which is about 26.5 cubic millimeters per second. So obviously, you know, I didn't go really granular, um, you know, I could have gone, you know, 11.5, you know, 13.45, for example, but um, I think this kind of just proves that the upgrade is worthwhile if you've got the parts laying around. Like, obviously, you probably don't want to go ahead and buy two extruders just for this. It's, you know, there are better extruders available, but if you happen to have the parts available, then... Um, yeah, it's it's not a bad option if you if you're after extrusion force. I mean, I don't know about quality wise. I really did like the Galileo two 
for quality. Um, I've never done any side by side testing really, but um, you know, I thought that single gear seemed to give me really good, um, nice smooth walls. Um, so I mean, it depends what you're after, but I can tell you that this has more force than the Orbiter. Um, I'm going to put in the description, I'm going to put my configs because obviously you've got to um, change the rotation rotation distance um, because of the different gearbox. So I'll put that in the description. Um, I'll also note that for these tests, um, I was using a TMC5160 at 48 volts. And I don't think 48 volts really matters from, from my testing, but um, I, th I think 24 volts, I don't think you reach the limit um, as far as the speeds go with these two extruders. But um, yeah, and I was uh, running 256 micro stepping, um, interpolate off, and 0 0.7 amps for the tests. Um, the Galileo 2 instructions recommend 0 0.6 amps, I think, for the motor, and then the uh, Orbiter 2 instructions recommend 0 0.85, which I think is too toasty for my liking um, from what I've found. So I went 0 0.7, which may even still be too toasty. I don't know. But, you know, you, you can you can work that out. I mean, if someone's doing this, they've probably got experience with this kind of stuff. So, yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully, the, hopefully this is helpful for someone.